Now we've gone through and tore down the motor as far as we're going to go with what we're wanting to do. So now we're going to do a little bit more teardown. We're actually in the process. We're going to go ahead and change out our valve springs, our retainers, and our locks, and our valve stem seals while we're in here. You can actually see here on these. So we've got this tool on here that's going to push down our valve springs, and that way the valve stems will pop up. In these little half moon pieces there's two on each on each valve stem these will come loose we can go and pull them out and then pull our retainers off and as you saw in an earlier episode when we were doing the teardown we already knocked these loose and that's why so these will come right out once we compress these down with this tool this tool is well worth it this one's actually made by trick flow there's a couple different ones out there this one works perfect um, you know, we'll leave a uh, description of it and part number and all that for you here in the, in the link, in the link below. So, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, change out some springs and some valve stem seals. Okay. So like anything, having the right tools makes the job so much easier. I think I spent like, I don't know, 60 or 70 bucks. I think maybe not even that for this tool off of like Summit or Jake's. I think either one of them offer it. This trick flow one's really good. It's really built well. I was kind of worried about it seeing it in the pictures, but I've actually used it on my my own car and uh, as Roxanne and um, it, it does great so let's go ahead first thing you want to do on this style LS heads you want to go ahead and tighten these two 13 millimeter bolts down so you're good and snug you don't want anything moving around there and then you run your center bolt down through so it, you make sure it's well into the bottom piece make sure you're good and lined up and gear wrench here is makes a world of difference way easier you don't really want the bolt spinning around you want the, the nut doing all the work so you just nice and easy and it compresses everything right on down and we've got them already knocked loose so they should come right on out Take our magnet right here and just pop them right out. So you want to kind of, this is a good time to take a quick look and see if you got any kind of abnormal wear or anything. These look pretty good, so we're good to go. <coughs> you can also look here on the valve stems and look for any kind of odd wear or anything like that, but... Like I said, these all look pretty good so far, so we will keep on trucking. Now, if you were going to, if you were just doing valve stem seals and reusing these, it's a really good idea to keep all the parts with the same, same valve, of these locks and retainers. Over time, everything kind of seats in, so, but we're replacing all this, so no need to worry about that here. There we go. Okay. All good. No crazy wear. No, we're good. So another quick little note here. We've got these heads off. They're sitting on the bench. We don't have to worry about if a valve drops or anything. Actually, it can only go as far as the bench is. So if you're doing this in the vehicle, motor still on, you're still in the engine bay, and you still got your heads on, there's a couple different ways to do it. Everyone's got their own personal preferences. I like to play it on the safe side. I'm not really a fan of the compressed air method. Yes, it works. People have been using it for years, all kind of different types of motors. But if for whatever reason you bump that valve loose, 
and then it gets open and then it's like a venturi effect and it's going to suck that valve right down into the cylinder and depending on where your piston is you're about to have a really bad day and you're about to have to pull ahead so i like to play it safe you know once i've got all my rockers off and everything i like to run it compress it down a little bit and then very easily spin the motor around until you see the valves come back up you don't want to do it very fast you don't want to bend any valves or anything but just enough just slow enough that you can watch them come back up then you know your pistons up at top dead center like we spoke about earlier and you don't have to worry about the valves dropping out you can do your business put them back together and you're good to go so now we've got our locks and retainers out so now let's go ahead and take our tension back off and take our springs Those just come off like that. Shouldn't be anything crazy or any weird, you know. But no springs, no cracking. If we had a cracked spring, we'd be in a really bad spot either way. But that looks pretty good here. You can see a little bit of crud built up. And these are your actual valve stem seals. So this is what keeps oil from pouring past the valve stems. It leaves just a little bit enough to get by to keep them lubricated, but that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and change these out. So we've got our springs, retainers, locks, all that off. You know, now we've got our getting ready to pull our valve stem seals. So I've set these two here. So one quick thing to notice when, and this pretty much goes for near about any engine. A lot of times it's some, you might see some differences, but most all the time, like we got this kit, this complete gasket kit for this motor, and it's got two different bags of valve stem seals. That's because one's your intake and one's your exhaust. Exhaust is always gonna typically be red because it's hot so just make sure when you're doing this make sure when you pull them off kind of clean up your surfaces a little bit and make sure you put them back in the right position these things pop off pretty easily this is a newer style with a full hat and everything so they come pretty much come right off so just like that right there see all that cruddy nastiness from 150,000 miles. This is why you change your oil, people. Okay, so you got your old valve stem seals off. You wanna probably you know, hit this with some brake clean. Clean it around there. Uh, if you're if you still got it on the motor, maybe a good idea to just take a rag to it, unless you're gonna go ahead and change the oil right away, which would probably be a good idea anyways. And just get in there all nice and clean everything up. And like I said, you've got your intake and then your exhaust. And what we're going to do is just nice and gently, I'm going to socket just the right size to fit over that lip and all, and just when you hear that tone change, you're good to go. Make sure you got a deep enough socket so you're not hitting the top of your valve stem. That's the last thing you want to do is damage that. And that's it.
So we'll go back together with them. So let's make sure we're good and clean, good and seated. Not make sure no one knows. Okay. Good idea to walk all around the socket and make sure. Which, granted, when you put the spring on, it would pull it down, but it's just better to make sure it's down that way. These have already got a little bit of oil on them and everything, so we're good there. Set them down there. Tool back up. All right. <clears throat> you want to make sure your valve springs and your retainers are all kind of centered up. They will walk around a little bit while you're setting up the tool and then kind of. Maybe put a little bit of downward pressure on it to keep them from moving. Just snug up the nut a little bit. And tighten it down. Okay, so the retainers had a little bit of oil on them and everything, so we're good there. But these come in dry, so it's a good idea to give them a little quick bath. It's just some synthetic motor oil. You can use any motor oil you want. You can use assembly lube, whatever, but we're just going to go ahead and use this. It also kind of helps them stick into place, too, so they're not jumping around on you. So okay, when you first start up the motor, it's going to take a second for oil to get up there. That way you've already got oil in it and you don't end up with any unnecessary wear. And I might have to move that spring around a little bit yet. Oh, and two, and make sure you're putting them in the right way. They're tapered. These are a seven degree. We didn't go anything crazy like a 10 degree on these, but... So they taper down and they wedge down in there and lock together. <laughs> Sometimes these can be a little tricky. So take your time. Don't get in a rush. Don't try to beat the clock or anything crazy like that. Just take your time. Yeah, there it is. 